Good afternoon to all. Uh, I'm Lalit Pallai, I'm a chairman of Civil Engineering Section of Committee uh, by ISL. Uh, actually, uh, we all know this special uh, project, actually special pro program, uh, Mahavali uh, Water Security Investment Program. Uh, we as ISL and Civil, Civil Engineering Section Committee, uh, we had some discussion on this uh, project and we got some uh, some kind of maybe letters from our some of our members uh, and some positive as well as some uh, maybe uh, comments so we have decided to uh, do some awareness get some awareness on behalf of our membership uh, and uh, discuss this matter so first um, i am not going to uh, dis discuss or uh, tell anything about this program uh, because uh, uh, they are very uh, good resource, but we have arranged very good resource personnel uh, from the project. So uh, with that uh, information, and uh, actually we discussed one engineer, uh, it's, uh, our, one of our council members, engineer Ranjit Silva, working in this project. Uh, with the help of him, uh, we have arranged uh, and we discussed with the project team, and they agreed to uh, give this awareness session. Actually, our idea is to, uh, after this program, maybe after maybe two, three weeks, there may be, uh, there may be one, uh, another program with some other experts on this same matter. And uh, actually, we want to have a good awareness and uh, we want to have a good discussion on this project. Uh, so with uh, all that, uh, uh, this session will be uh, uh, happen as a, uh, there may be two presentation and and some panel discussion. All these uh, two presentation and panel discussion will be handled by uh, these pro this, uh, pro program officers, especially Mahavali Water Security Development Program officers. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Engineer uh, P W C Dayaratna. He will be the deputy uh, deputy team leader of program management and program management and. Um, uh, design and supervision consultant of this project, and he will be handle this uh, this session because he's the person. I think we believe he's the person to handle this this session because he's the, uh, he he will uh, handle the uh, panel discussion as well. After this, uh, that uh, main part, uh, one of our colleague, uh, our deputy chairman of our sectional committee, will be deliver the vote of thanks. So uh, th that's uh, 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 enough from my side because our important part is to uh, get the awareness of this project. So I would like to invite you all to maybe you, uh, we, we have already arranged that uh, uh, mute all the mics ex except all the all speakers. And uh, so uh, by uh, any, any I, I hope no one will try to, uh, 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 switch on your mic because it will be disturbed and if any have some problem you may type and you may send a message then we all can uh, man arrange so with that i would like to invite engineer dayaratna to handle this session over to uh, audio engineer dayaratna. thank you very much uh, engineer lalit pallegama can you hear me i think yeah we can hear you well. okay then thank you very much uh, for the introduction given and uh, I will first introduce our panel members because uh, I think it is better I, I introduce my panel members. Uh, first here is uh, Mrs. Anoma Pandala, Additional Secretary Minister of Irrigation. She graduated from the University of uh, uh, Peradeni in 1985 and has obtained his master's. And also, she is presently working as the uh, additional Secretary, Water Resources Manager of the Ministry of Education. Then I will introduce the other panel members. Mrs. Fangini Perra is a senior consultant, uh, senior consultant on the project management unit and is functioning as the, as the coordinator for the Northwestern Province Canal mm -hmm. project. She graduated uh, in 1983 and uh, presently obtained his master's engineering in land and water resources of the Elf University in 1997. Then I will introduce the other panel member, Mr. Karnanayaka. 
He's also a BSc engineer in civil engineering, University of Paratua, and he's a member of Chartered Engineer of the Institute of Engineers and Masters in uh, Land and Water Resources in the Delft University. Uh, and has worked in the overseas also, New Zealand. Okay, then uh, I will continue. Then I will introduce the other panel member, Dr. Dhunu Singha is an uh, economist, uh, professor, uh, lead in economics department at Economic University of Maratua, University of Colombo. He worked as an economist for the Mahali Watt Institute in NESPA program in carrying out the economic analysis of this project. Then I will introduce the uh, engineer, Elena Guru Singha, he is presently working as a water resources engineer and has gained a lot of experience in uh, doing this water balance study for a period of about more than four years, four to five years in this project. So with that, I think I will uh, uh, we'll start the presentation. I think it is better if I give some introduction about the Mahavali Development Program because it is the biggest water resources development project undertaken by the government of Sri Lanka. The construction work of this Mahavali Development Project commenced in 1970 and after 50 years of time, we are still not completed the Mahavali Development Project. A lot of uh, eminent engineers has contributed to the development of early development to its present state. As part of the presentation, I will give a summary background to the origin of Mahavali development project. The level of contents are shown in this uh, screen actually. First, I think we are we are going into the background. Then the after that we are going into the Mahavali Water Security Investment Program, and also North Central Points Canal Project Phase Two. Then the water availability project economics and technical issues will be discussed. So I will call upon the members to uh, question anything after our presentation is completed. As part of the presentation, I will give a, a summary the background to the origin of the Mahavali development and its present status as some of the members may not may not have a clear picture about the Mahavali development project. In that part of 1950s, the irrigation department has uh, restored most of the major irrigation schemes in the in the north, north central province in Andhradupura and Polonarwa districts. But they have observed that uh, even after uh, restoring these schemes, the farmers in these schemes were frequently suffered from water shortages. So uh, this, is, this became a major problem in the north central province. And uh, as a solution to this problem, ID proposed diversion of Mahavali to the north central province. That is to mainly to the Andhradupura and Polonarwa districts and also to north of Andhradupura. The, the stand shown here is the, the start of the Mahavali development project. In 1961, irrigation department with the support of United United uh, yeah, yeah, the state of operation. operation center in Ceylon carried out a study actually. In this study, actually, they proposed originally diversion of Mahavali water to North Central Points area through a canal called North Central Points Canal. And also the construction of uh, uh, Potmale Reservoir, that time it was called Nugavela Reservoir. And also the downstream uh, diversion was carried out to a place called Primrose, 
upstream of Pera Deli here, and, uh, and also on the construction of Motagahakanda Reservoir to divert part of Mahavali water for the benefit of the Polanarua uh, irrigation systems. So I, I, this is actually a major uh, milestone, I think, the commencement of the Mahavali development project. So this is mainly a part of, it's not the full development of the Mahavali, only, uh, only to meet that problems of the farmers settled in the North Central Province Canal. But the government uh, requested the irrigation department to uh, do a further studies and come out with a comprehensive plan for the development of the entire Mahavali Basin, including its uh, adjacent river basins. So accordingly, in 1968, uh, Irrigation Department, with the support of the United, United UNDP, came out with a very comprehensive uh, Mahavali development program and uh, this program includes uh, construction of 13 irrigation system and, uh, and provided water to about 365,000 hectares of land for irrigation. And drinking water was not a priority at that time. Then the electricity generation also about 460 megawatts. Then if you go into the achievement up to date, we have provided irrigation facilities only 165,000 hectares, but that is amount to about 45% of the target area proposed in the plan. But the electricity contribution has exceeded the original target of 460 megawatts, and it is around 835 megawatts now. Including the Morgak and the uh, power, power project. So, the balance to be carried out mainly on the irrigation development is about 55% of that area. The main reason for the shortfall is uh, the non development of the North Central Points Canal project. It's North Central Points Canal project. And uh, mainly the North and also the system A development, redu reduction of the system A development due to land area reduction of the forest area coverage and also the Madhuru Air right bank uh, development works. So this plan, this uh, diagram shows the areas not developed under the original Mahali master plan. This shows that IJK, IJK, LM are the areas not developed so far. Actually, it's called the North Central Points Canal Project area. And also the Madurai right bank area, uh, which was not developed up to date, but the Mahavali Authority has now commenced the development works of this area also. So, so this is the, the present status of the original Mahavali master plan. The green color shows the areas already developed by under the Mahavali development project. If you go into the milestones of the Mahavali development program, the program approved in 1968 and the construction work commenced in 1970 with the construction of Polgolad IUS Paraj Polgola diversion tunnel, the Bovatana complex, and Bovatana tunnel diverting water to the system mix and uh, Kandalama reservoirs. Then in 1977, this uh, Polgola Bovatana complex was completed in 1976 with diversion of water to even to the Andhradapura city area, city tanks. Then in 1977, the government uh, accelerated this Mahali development program called Accelerated Mahali Development Program. And the main objective of this uh, accelerated project is to, is to capture the hydropower potential of the Mahali River 
and also the development of agriculture to make Sri Lanka self-sufficient in rice and for the employment generation. At the end of this accelerated Mahavidu project, uh, most of these objectives has been achieved. Uh, under this uh, accelerated program, uh, reservoirs like Potmale, Victoria, Rantabay, Rantabay, Minipay, Anikat, uh, Madhuroya Reservoir, uh, and, uh, and Transpacing Canal, Diverting Minipay Right Bank Canal, Olivia Rathi in the reservoir, so all completed and system B and C also developed. And with that, I think the irrigation about about 40,000 hectares of lands were developed in system B and C. Then there was a period, I think there was a no development works because of the civil uh, disturb civil disturbances exist in the north central province area, road areas and the eastern province. And there was no development works uh, after about 2000 period. In about 2009, 2019 period, uh, MASL took initiative to construct the two left out reservoirs, Morga Kanda and Kaluanga. This considered as a milestone for the development of the rest of the Mahavali development port area. The Morgakanda reservoir was completed in 2018 and Kaluanga reservoir was connect, completed in 2019. Actually, these two reservoirs will add about uh, 750 million cubic meters of water to the existing irrigation system and give high flexibility in diverting water and also these, these two storages now paved the way for the develop, uh, development of the North Central Police Canal project. So now uh, I think we have now come to the last phase of uh, Mahavali development project. In 2013, uh, government gave uh, instructions to proceed with the North Central Police Canal project. And based on the studies carried out by the Mahavali Consultancy Bureau, uh, the ADB studied this uh, proposal made by the Mahavali Consultancy Bureau and uh, proposed to implement the North Central Province Canal project in two phases. So this Mahavali Water Security Investment Program includes the phase one of the North Central Province Canal project. It includes the construction of the uh, link tunnel between the Kaluanga Reservoir to Morgahakanda Reservoir to divert excess water in the Kaluanga Reservoir to Morgahakanda and also the connecting tunnel from the Morgahakanda to a place called Yakala, 65 kilometers of length and also the another project called uh, Northwestern Province Canal Project the Northwestern Points Canal project was not included in the original master plan. However, there were requests from the farmers, politicians, and civil societies in that area to include the, to divert water to the Northwestern Points dry zone areas. Accordingly, this also included in the Mahavadi Water Security Investment Program. The third project is the mini pay. And it tracing and also the rehabilitation of the mini pay uh, LB canal, a bank canal of length 74 kilometers. So these are the three projects included in the Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. In addition, it includes the feasibility studies for the phase two development also. Phase two, uh, this phase is included only the Phase one of the NCP canal, that is 65 kilometer length of uh, NCP canal from Morga Kanda to Yakala. And from Yakala, it diverts. There is a trifurcation structure to be constructed. And from that trifurcation structure, water will be diverted to Guruluava and from the uh, and to the uh, left side uh, to the Mahakandrava and uh, Mahakandrava and the Natchaduva Nodavava system. 
and also to the north the main ship canal so i think my colleague tilna uh, gurusinga will now give more more description of the mahali war security investment program over to mr tilna good evening everyone now i am going to discuss about mahavali water security investment program in short form we call it mwsip then i also use the same word mwsip uh, this mwsip is the first phase of north central province canal project um, and this program or mwsip is planned to complete the left out uh, projects of mahavali development program initially approved in 1968 this uh, mw mwsip has several objectives this is a national development project uh, related to central province northwestern province north central province eastern province and northern province of sri lanka in uh, in both phases of this ncp canal project uh, under this both phases about 100000 of irrigable land will be benefited and by providing drinking water about 285000 285000 families will get benefited in addition to that several uh, indirect benefits industrial fisheries tourism and those uh, benefits also will be realized after completing of this entire project um, the planning of this project was started in 2012 13 period Uh, this this initial planning was conducted by national experts and the mahavali consultancy bureau uh, this planning was included a feasibility study feasibility study and environmental impact assessment conducted by the national experts after that in in the latter part of 2014 and 2015 uh, adb has reviewed this feasibility study conducted by mahavel consultancy bureau through independent consultants after reviewing the water availability project feasibility economic viability and social acceptability uh, the adb agreed to provide funds for this program uh, so after that in 2015 end of 2015 the adp signed the loan agreement with government of sri lanka to provide funds for the phase 1 of ncp canal project or uh, mahavali water security investment program the implementation period of this program is starting uh, at the end of 2015 and it will go up to 2024 uh, this program has three main projects first one is minipay left bank canal rehabilitation project uh, under this project uh, the existing minipay anchor will be heightened by 7.5 sorry 3.5 meters and the existing minipay left bank canal will be rehabilitated and some of these projects are already completed then the next project is northwestern province canal project or we call it wyambala or in short form we call it nwp canal project then the main project is going to implement under this uh, mwsip is the first stage of north central province canal project or we call it upper alhar canal project the the details about this project i will explain later in addition to that um the feasibility study for the phase 2 of uh, ncp canal project is also con conducted under this program uh, as per the latest cost estimates uh, the project cost will be about 965 million of us dollars this is the first project now i am going to explain minipay left bank canal rehabilitation project uh, this existing minipay anigat is located here it was constructed under the accelerated mahavali development program 
uh, about three kilometer downstream of Rantambi Reservoir. This is Rantambi Reservoir. Uh, as per the existing uh, situation in, in the area, uh, this mini panicle is only getting water uh, from the releases of Rantambi Reservoir. Other than that, hardly any, any water is coming to mini panicle. So, uh, usually, uh, Rantambi uh, Reservoir and Power Plant is operating for peak power operation. So, when the uh, when this power plant is operating for peak power generation, uh, a large quantity of water is spilling over the mini panicle due to the due to the inadequate storage over the anicle. So after power generation is stopped, uh, this uh, mini pool get dried up and hardly any water can be diverted to. Uh, Later stages of mini bay left bank canal. So, so the, the solution identified uh, to overcome this problem is to raise the mini bay existing anchor by 3.5 meters, 3.5 meters, uh, to create an upstream storage over the anchor. By creating this upstream, uh, upstream um, by raising this anchor, about three, about 0 0.95 MCM of storage can be created upstream of anchor. Then, um, uh, runtime power generation, peak power generation, can be done without spilling over the anchor, and that water would be um, uh, used to uh, do a regulator supply. For the stages three and four of mini PLV canal, and through the uh, and the next one is uh, under this project, the mini PLV left bank canal, which is seventy four kilometer long canal, starting from mini PLV anchor, then will go up to what is we have. Uh, construction activities are now completed. Uh, but the uh, mini heightening, heightening works, about 60% uh, of the work are now completed. This is some drone photographs taken during the uh, heightening of mini panicle in, um, in recent. Uh, this photograph is taken about uh, seven, eight years ago at a place in Minipay Canal. You, you can see there, there were a lot of dis disturbances uh, to uh, di divert water along the canal. And uh, these are some recent photographs taken during the construction of some uh, canal sections in Minipay State 3 area. And this is a bypass canal constructed temporarily to provide water during the construction period. This is also another photograph taken during the construction. Then the next project of Mahavali Water Security Investment Program is the Northwestern Province Canal Project. The main objective of this project is to provide much needed irrigation and drinking water to uh, uh, Upper Miyoya and Hakwadmaoya basin. Uh, the identified water sources for this project is Nalanda Reservoir and Bodan Reservoir. Uh, uh, under this project, about seven mega and medium tanks and 350 minor tanks will get benefited. These seven, tank, seven tanks are Palukadavala, Ataragala, Abakolavala, Mediava, Hakpatunawa, Devahuva, and Vermadil. If we consider the existing status of this, uh, I, mean, I mean, existing propping intensity of these tanks, 
this uh, Deva who and Vamadil already having the propylene intensity of two, close to two. And, uh, but under this project, this uh, Vamadil tank will be totally rehabilitated. And Deva who also get uh, continuous supply in short period of time. But in this uh, other areas, in, in this Mio and Aquatna area, these tanks are having a cropping intensity of about 1.2, these uh, mid and medium tanks. But when we consider the other 350 minor tanks, their cropping intensity is about 4.9. Uh, by, by providing water, uh, we, have, uh, we can increase the cropping intensity of the system. Uh, this, we are going to keep the Vamed land there who were at cropping intensity too, but other tank, it will be increased up to 1.7 cropping intensity. Um, uh, in, in order to... <coughs> sorry. In order to uh, make this irrigation and drinking water supplies, uh, this project will constructed several infrastructure. This consists of a uh, tunnel starting from Bovatan Reservoir to Vamed Reservoir, 8.4 kilometer long tunnel. Uh, then the rehabilitation of existing Devahua Pida Canal is starting from Vamedilla and goes up to somewhere here. And the new construction of about another 80 kilometer long canals uh, this canal and these canals. Canals. In addition to that, uh, two major storage reservoirs, this is called uh, Mahakirula, this is called Mahakirula, will be constructed within the Pahalla Pallekale Forest Reserve. By constructing these, uh, these reservoirs, it will act as a storage reservoir and uh, it will be beneficial for the uh, although it will uh, inundate some uh, um, forest lands, it will be beneficial for the wildlife. This is some photograph taken um, before the rehabilitation of the Uwe Peter Canal, and this photograph has taken after the rehabilitation and improvement. Under this uh, NWT Canal project, about 13,000 hectares of irrigation land will be benefited and about 10 MCM of drinking water will be supplied, which will be beneficial for about 35,000 families in Galgamu and Tuevo Polpitegama areas. These are some of the photographs taken during the construction of uh, this NWP canal. Then this is the main project will be implemented under Mahavali Water Security International Program. Uh, this project uh, has uh, two main components. One is Kaluganga Murakahakanda Trans Canal, which includes two tunnel sections and two aqueducts and small open canal section. And about uh, about 75% of the works of this canal is now completed. Uh, then the next project is uh, phase one of North Central Province Canal project, uh, which is also called Upper Alhara Canal. This canal is starting from Moragahakandar Reservoir. This is Moragahakandar Reservoir. And it will uh, going through along this route and it will end up here, this place is called Yakala, a place near Huruluwewa. At this place, a trifurcation structure will be constructed. From that structure, water would be provided in three directions. To the right side, it will provide water to this Huruluwewa, this is Huruluwewa. And towards left side, it will provide water to this uh, Malwatoe, the, the irrigation yeah. tanks in Malwatwe system. Yeah, through Maminyawe. Uh, under this uh, project, uh, several irrigation tanks 
will get benefited. Kurulu vava, this irrigation system of Mana and Katia, Eru vava, Nata duva, Nuara vava, Isa vava, and Mahanadara. All these tanks will get benefited under this uh, canal project. And um, I, I want to say something this Kurulu uh, vava, uh, Nata duva, Nuara vava, and Isa vava. These tanks are at present also getting water through system made, but it is very, uh, it is, uh, it is, it was a temporary measure implemented under accelerated Nahara development program or, or operated with under uh, several impediments. So after constructing this, uh, this phase one of this canal, uh, these uh, tanks will get an uh, uninterrupted supply from this. Because this canal is express operated as function as an express canal. Uh, this canal has several canal types: uh, trapezoidal open canals, rectangular open canals, uh, trapezoidal uh, so uh, rectangular conduits, uh, circular conduits, and uh, a 28 kilometer long canal starting from somewhere here. This place is, is called Konduruava and will go up to uh, 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 Namalpura in uh, Palugasya area. Uh, I will these uh, technical details I will explain later. And uh, this photograph shows one of the circular conduit uh, constructed under uh, stage one of North Central Province Canal. Um, if we consider the propping intensities of these tanks, uh, this Nachaduva, Puruluva, Nuruluva, and Kisadava tanks, their propping intensity is about um, about 1.5, 1.6 propping intensity. Um, but this uh, Mahakanadarava uh, and uh, Manankatya tanks, their propping intensity low is about 1.2 propping intensity. After providing water, this propping intensity will be increased up to 1.8. In addition to that, uh, about 40 MCM of drinking water will be supplied under this project. Um, this water uh, is uh, adequate to provide uh, about 150,000 families as per the um, uh, standard maintained by the National Water Supply and Drainage Board. Altogether, about 12,300 hectares will get benefited under this uh, uh, stage one of this uh, North Central Province Canal and 40 MCM of drinking water. <clears throat> These are some photographs taken during the construction of this canal. Uh, after that, I will uh, so some so one of the videos uh, prepared about the um, constructed site of this project.
Uh, then I am going to explain about the phase two of North Central Province Canal project. Uh, this, uh, this project has uh, three main uh, projects. Uh, one is stage two of uh, North Central Province Canal. It's starting from Yakal and will go up to Chemadukulam Pan in Waunia. 85 kilometer long canal and uh, this is the area uh, this is the area of this area which will be considered as the uh, main benefited uh, water user in, in this area <laughs> then uh, for this project uh, two water sources have been identified one is gravity supply other one is Pump supply. For, for the gravity supply, Randerigala uh, Kaluganga Transa Canal has been designed with um, three reservoirs. One is Lower Umawe Reservoir, then Hasalaka Reservoir, and Singanga Reservoir. All together uh, from Randerigala Kaluganga Transa Canal and these three reservoirs, about 70% of the uh, what requirement of NCP canal project could be obtained. Uh, the balance 30% is planned to obtain from 
constructing a pump station at lower mahavali basin near a location called janavanjanagar uh, and pump this water to mahavali sister then i will little bit explain about the ncp canal target area uh, this canal is starting from uh, yakal you may remember that uh, that the stage one of this canal is uh, ends up uh, at yakal the stage two of this uh, ncp canal will start from yakal from yakal this canal is going through this area is a uh, galen bindu nuyava and uh, this area is kahatagas vigilia and and this area is called ratmal gaha vava and this area gonamaria uh, cavity gol lava and it finally goes up, uh, this is this area called mamadu and finally goes up to kemmadu kulam tank in kanagarayan uh, naru basin in north of waunia near omanke uh, uh, this uh, this canal route is going along the fringe of several river basins you can see in different colors this river basin so by this canal uh, both uh, both sides of the canal can be supplied and uh, branch canal network about 12 branch canals is designed with the ncp canal Uh, under the ncp canal uh, five major irrigation systems will be benefited i will explain those things first one is uh, under the phase one of this uh, project mahaganagar raval tank will get benefited but uh, under this under phase two of this project there is a proposal to extend the mahaganagar raval lb canal towards Uh, this side, this area is called Upadisagama near Oyamadu area. Uh, uh, by extending this uh, this canal, about two thousand five hundred of uh, irrigable la irrigable land and the minor land could be supplied. Next one is uh, um, two existing anchors located downstream of Puruluwa across Yanoya. This is for all of us. These two anchors are located. One is for Ikiluka anchor, other one is for Alipotani anchor. These two systems are also considered. In addition to that, there is a proposed anchor called Brahmanyagama somewhere here, and the command area under this anchor also considered for this um, NCP canal project. Uh, irrigation department is currently doing um, studies. to construct this brahmanyagama anigat by constructing this anigat uh, water could be supplied towards this area this area is called gomaranga devala and atabanjiya areas in addition to that pavat kulam reservoir this one and proposed kulu reservoir the command area sand kulu reservoir and finally iranawad uh, tank also will get benefited under this project all together 18500 of uh, lands will get benefited under this uh, then uh, major benefited area under this plan is located in this uh, area uh, under minor tank minor irrigation system about under 1200 minor irrigation system uh, about 43000 fertile irrigable lands are available initially when the mahavali master plan was planned uh, they wanted to convert this entire area into irrigation systems by uh, removing these minor tanks and converting them into uh, system uh, paddy land that concept is called system development but uh, due to the uh, environmental reason uh, later proved that uh, that concept was not much successful so now uh, we are going to do a uh, development concept called cascade development and by providing the uh, upstream tanks of the cascade uh, 
under these mine tank cascade systems about 43000 hectares of lands are available um if i explain the distribution of these uh, uh, minor tank systems in river basin wise in malwatu river basin about 49000 uh, sorry about 49% of these uh, lands are available from 43000 about 49% of the lands are located in malwatu river basin uh, then next, next system is Parangyaru and Paliyaru systems. Uh, they are located uh, northwestern side of Paunia. Mm, about 8% uh, of the lands are located in this, in this uh, river basin systems. Then in Kanagarayana river basin, this area, about 3% of the lands are available. I mean, irrigable lands are considered under this 43,000. Then uh, Maoya. Maoya means it's, uh, the river basin where Padavi existed. Uh, and uh, in this Maoya river basin, about 17% 17% of this land are located upstream of Padavi reservoir. This area. Then uh, in Yanoi river basin, upstream of this Wahalka and Yanoi Yanoi reservoirs, about 24% of the uh, lands are available. This is the uh, area distribution of this 43,000 hectare of lands. Then under NCP canal, state two, about uh, 61,500, uh, 18,500 plus, 40, plus 43,000 lands will get benefited. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, Hantale sugarcane uh, sugar cane farm also considered to provide water under this uh, phase two of this uh, project. In addition to that, uh, the people living in this area are um, heavy, heavily suffering from uh, chronic kidney disease issues. We call it CKDU. Uh, to provide them uh, uh, clean drinking water, we have allocated about 30 mcm of drinking water per annum. It will be uh, sufficient to provide about 100,000 families uh, of, uh, for their water supply purposes. Then uh, I'm going to explain about the water availability, uh, water availability for the phase two of this program and also phase one also. But they have a lot, they have a lot of concerns from the main stakeholders about the water availability. They think that uh, by expanding the existing Mahavadi system, the exi existing Mahavadi system will be suffered. And also there are concerns about the difficulties in diverting water to the existing system. Uh, even this is mainly due to the present status of the existing irrigation system. If you consider the Bovatanna tunnel, the capacity of the Bovatanna tunnel is 28 cubic meters per second. That is a constraint in the existing system. But when we construct another Bovatanna tunnel, BT2, it will provide flexibility in providing water to the system H area. In addition, the construction of the uh, North Central Province Canal Stage 1 will transfer water presently issued from the Ugluya Feeder Canal and the H area to NCP uh, Canal and giving much flexibility into the existing system. And also the KMTC, the, uh, the connection of the Kaluanga to Muragakanda also will provide additional water about 100 mcm water. When Kaluanga and Morgaganda alone comes into the existing scheme, there will be a lot of flexibility. So the, the stakeholders still have not, uh, not uh, experienced this change in the situation after construction of the Morgaganda Reservoir. Now I am going to explain about the water availability. Uh, water availability assessments and uh, 
some some general terms about the water availability. Uh, before starting of this Mahal water security investment program, several water balance assessments were conducted under several uh, several consultants in 1968 under UNDP master plan. There is a water balance assessment, and in 1979 under Nedeco consultant and the implementation strategy study. They also did a water balance study, and Electro and Aga and uh, self defense consultants in 1981 did another water balance assessment called Trans Basin Diversion Study, and in 1989 Daika consultants did another water balance assessment called Extension of Mumuraga and the Agricultural Projects. And in 2013, MCB consultants also did another water balance assessment. All these water balance assessments has proven that uh, water is available um, for the full development of North Central Province Canal project. Uh, actually, uh, uh, before uh, actual before actual the funds for this. Uh, this uh, Mahali Water Security Investment Program, uh, Asian Development Bank with the assistance of the government of Sri Lanka, uh, did a, a comprehensive review on the water balance assessment conducted by uh, Mahali Water Mahali Consultancy Bureau uh, through uh, independent consultants. After assuring water availability only, they have provided the funds for this uh, program. So. Phase one in infrastructure of this uh, this program uh, was uh, designed as per the MCB water balance assessment, and uh, after that, uh, with the uh, request from stakeholders, uh, a daily water balance water availability assessment was included for um, Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. This daily water availability assessment was conducted by group of national and international experts with the participation, with the participation of group of uh, engineers from stakeholder organizations. Uh, this stakeholder organization, these uh, members from stakeholder organizations were trained in Sri Lanka and abroad also, and on the job, job uh, training also given, and several work workshops also conducted. Uh, under this uh, water balance assessment, there were several uh, assessments were conducted. One is rainfall runoff assessment, which is to uh, assess the uh, catchment inflows at several reservoir nodes and reservoir and infrastructure nodes along the system. So for that, uh, we used. Uh, a software tool called Soil Water Assessment Tool, in, in, uh, in simple called SWOT, uh, to uh, assess the water uh, catchment inflows. So these models were calibrated, uh, calibrated on the uh, measured catchment inflows maintained from the uh, stream gauges from irrigation department. And uh, long-term long volume of these catchment inflows were compared with the uh, measurements taken at existing infrastructure. For example, uh, the Victoria Victoria Reservoir, Andhra Reservoir, and some reservoirs in uh, uh, Andhradapur and uh, Polonnaruwa. All these measurements were compared with the uh, catchment inflows uh, simulated from these models and uh, checked the uh, check if there are any uh, discrepancy between these results. Then irrigation demand assessment was conducted for the about 30 irrigation systems. Uh, this irrigation assessment was conducted uh, based on uh, past irrigation duties, considering a, about 5% uh, efficiency improvement. Uh, also, after considering this, uh, after uh, assessing the irrigation demand, it was identified that some of the irrigation systems like Kantale, Kuruluwa, their irrigation duty at present also were very low, uh, 
For example, in Kantare and Hururava, in some of the Maha season, they have done the cultivation with about two feet of uh, water duty and therefore increase the um, robustness of the uh, water balance assessment. We kept a, uh, we kept a um, threshold limit. Uh, it is uh, three feet for Maha season and three and a half feet for Yala season. If, uh, any of the irrigation system at present, their um, irrigation duty is less than uh, 3% in Maha season. Uh, we, uh, we use uh, three feet for the water balance, this irrigation demand assessment and water balance assessment. If the duty is more than three feet, we use the same value. And uh, drinking water demands uh, also considered about 258 MCM per annum uh, in the entire Mahan system was included for this module. Uh, then, uh, considering all these things, um, a water balance assessment was conducted uh, using a software package called Riverware uh, uh, to take the water availability and in this model, I will little bit explain um, the storage, existing storages of these tanks and canal capacities, uh, proposed infrastructure capacities. All these things are um, is considered. For example, uh, uh, minimum operating levels of the canals and minimum minimum operating levels of the reservoirs. All these things were considered in the model uh, because. Uh, uh, we wanted to um, uh, simulate the system as much as possible to as much as possible to close to the existing uh, realistic system. So this water water availability assessment uh, nearly took three years to complete, and in two thousand end of two thousand nineteen, all the stakeholders agreed that what is available uh, and confirmed. Uh, for development of phase two. Uh, then I will explain uh, this, this uh, water availability in simple, simple terms uh, uh, for the phase one and phase two. Uh, before construction of this Moragahakanta reservoir upstream of Alayar Anikat, uh, about um, uh, 400 plus MCM of water annually being spilled over to the sea as per the measurements taken at Alara Anikan. So by constructing the Mumuragahakanta reservoir, about 350 MCM of water could be captured and stored in Mumuragahakanta and could be used for the Mahavali system. In addition, uh, the Kaluganga reservoir has been uh, Kaluganga Reservoir has been constructed. Um, by constructing this Kaluganga Reservoir, uh, about 100 MCM of water could be diverted to Moragahakanda Reservoir through uh, Kaluganga Moragahakanda Transfer Canal. After completion of Kaluganga Moragahakanda Transfer Canal, that water could be diverted to Mahavali system through Moragahakanda Reservoir. This water could be used to increase the cropping intensity of existing system. That means uh, in foreign Maru systems, the cropping intensity will be increased up to uh, two and uh, other existing systems, uh, uh, system H, system IH, MH, will be increased up to 1.8. In addition to that, Mahakanadarava uh, reservoir will be added to the system and NWP system also added to the Mahavali system. With this, uh, uh, with this captured water. Uh, then I will explain about the water availability uh, for phase two in general terms. Uh, uh, the spillage reduction uh, captured that Kaluganga and Moragahakan reservoirs are only sufficient for the phase one of Mahavali water security investment program. That means 
um, to provide water to existing Mahaveli system and at NWP and Mahakanada Rao systems. Uh, but for the phase two, uh, additional water should be diverted to Moragahakanda Reservoir from main Mahaveli Basin. Otherwise, in Moragahakanda Kalwanga Reservoir, no water available for phase two development. For that, uh, we have identified two water sources. One is uh, gravity supply, other one is pump supply. For gravity, gravity supply, we have identified Rande Nigala Kalwanga Transfer Canal, then the uh, existing infrastructure constructed at uh, uh, Kalwanga Reservoir and the KMTC tunnel could be utilized. And uh, with this, Lower Umau Reservoir, Hasalak Reservoir, and Shingang Reservoir will be constructed. I will explain this in the, in the next slide. And a pumping station <coughs> at, sorry, pumping station at Lower Mahavel Basin is planned to construct. Uh, this is the general arrangement of Ramde uh, Nigala Padubanga Transfer Canal. This is Victoria Reservoir, this is Ramde Nigala Reservoir, this is Rantambe Reservoir, and Mini Panicus is located here. Uh, here you can see the uh, uh, you can see the water sources identified for this Sandrigal uh, Kalmana Transfer Canal. This is Hinganga Reservoir. By constructing Hinganga Reservoir, uh, we can add about 100 mcm of water to Mahavar system uh, through connecting Hinganga to Kalmana Reservoir. Uh, from Kalwanga Reservoir, infrastructure are there to uh, supply this water to Moragahanga Reservoir. Then Hasalaka Reservoir, somewhere here across Hasalaka area, could be constructed then uh, can capture about 50 mcm of water to supply Kalwanga Reservoir by constructing this tunnel. Uh, then this uh, lower Umawaya Reservoir can be constructed across Umawaya. Umawa is currently flowing to Rantambe Reservoir due to the inadequate storage uh, in Rantambe Reservoir and the flat flat situation in Umawa. This water cannot be um, stored in Rantambe. So by constructing this uh, lower Umawa Reservoir at this location, that water could be diverted to Randanigan Reservoir, which is about 200, 200 mcm of water could be diverted to Randanigan. Then 200 mcm from Lower Umawaya and another 300 from Randinigala, about 500 could be diverted from Randinigala to Kaluganga. Then all together, uh, this, from this system, about 650 mcm could be diverted to Kaluganga. Um, <coughs> this is about 70% of the water requirement of NCP canal, NCP canal target area. Then I will a uh, little bit explain about the water availability in Pandanigal, Rantabe, and this system. Uh, this schematic diagram shows the uh, existing uh, Rantanigal, Rantabe cascade, reservoir cascade, then existing mini uh, uh, The power flows and spillage of this Rantanigal reservoir will directly go up to uh, Rantambe Reservoir, which is located about uh, four kilometers downstream of uh, Ranjanigal Dam. Also, Umawaya is uh, uh, coming to uh, Rantambe Reservoir. After that, uh, no major stream is added to uh, Mahavali Ganga between Minipe and uh, Rantambe. The distance is about three kilometers. Um, the power releases and the spillage of Rantambe will only get to Minipe Anikat. As per the data uh, from uh, 1992 to 2018, as average, 170 mcm of water uh, is spilled over Rantambe Reservoir. 
and about 2220 mcm of power flow is generating through uh, turbines altogether this is close to uh, 2400 mcm from this water uh, along lp lb canal about 300 mcm of water is diverting and along rb canal about 1100 of water is diverting altogether about 1400 of water is diverting from mini panicat then about uh, 900 and 900 plus mcm of water is getting spilled over mini panicat you can see the uh, large portion of the power flows also getting spilled over mini panicat without being used you know power flows are uh, uh, regulated flows this flow also getting spilled over mini panicat then flow into sea um, but uh, now uh, upper umara reservoir is being constructed after the construction of this upper umara reservoir and uh, divert uh, some water quantity into kirindio basin kirindio basin um, this yeah. field uh, reduce will reduce by another 100 to 150 mcm uh, then by by constructing uh, uh, lower umawe reservoir across umawe about 200 mcm of water could be captured that could be diverted to pandengal reservoir and uh, by constructing randnigal kaluna trans canal about 500 mcm of water could be diverted um, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, if we consider the uh, distribution of this uh, uh, an annual uh, spillage and power flows about uh, more than 80% of the time Yeah, I mean, eighty percent of the years, more than thousand one hundred, thousand nine hundred, sorry, thousand eight hundred of MCM of water is uh, growing from Rantambi Reservoir. Uh, then I will explain about the pumping project. Uh, this project has. Uh, uh, Design and plan as two stages. Stage one is to directly supply the uh, water requirement of Kantare sugarcane area. Uh, as per the, any of the pre pre uh, feasibility studies conducted for Kaluga Kaluga or Moraga Kantare surveys, the water requirement of the sugarcane area has not considered. If, if you if you can refer uh, Jaika report or Lamia report, uh, they are the main report. Uh, to prepare for the construction of uh, Moraga Kanda Reservoir and for uh, Kalugang Reservoir, it was Lamia report in 2004. Under any of these reports, the Mahavali Authority has not considered to supply water to the sugarcane area. Therefore, uh, if the sugarcane area <coughs> is going to develop, new water source has to be identified. This source uh, Under this project, it was considered. Uh, then, in, in stage two, uh, part of the irrigation water requirement of Kaudulla and Kantale tanks will be supplied from this pumping station, and the same amount of water could be retained in Morgahatan the reservoir and uh, diverted to NCP area. And I want to emphasize that. Under the Morgahakan the project, the uh, water uh, water requirement of Kaudulla and Kantale is assured because uh, under uh, under the command area of Morgahakan the and Kalugan the Morgahakan the reservoir, uh, the um, water availability for Kantale paddy area and Kaudulla paddy area and Kaudulla new development area uh, this area this area. Uh, Has considered for their water balance assessment and what is assured for them, um, and this pumping station is an integral part of North Central Province Canal project, and this has not designed to supply water to uh, uh, 
Kantaleo Kaudu Reservoirs, but to provide a part of the water requirement and get that water for NCP development. Otherwise, uh, there are some misconceptions that uh, this pumping station is designed for the Kantalian Kaudu system. It is not for Kantalian Kaudu systems, it is for uh, it is as an integral part of uh, NCP development, but uh, to supply the system in economical way, this uh, arrangement has been considered. Uh, then I want to emphasize another thing. Uh, this is not the first time pumping has introduced to Mahavar system. In all the master plans and water balance assessments I have uh, explained in a uh, previous slide, uh, UNDP uh, and all these uh, uh, studies, they have considered pumping with uh, um, large quantities and uh, uh, with a uh, high lift. For example, uh, in UNDP master plan, they have planned to pump about 800, 800 MCM from under Manila to NCP canal. Then uh, Nedeco master plan, they have considered two pumping stations. One is at Andamadilla, other one is from Min area to Kirioy. Then the third one in, in the electro, electro master plan, they have planned a, a pumping station at Hettipola to pump to Kaluanga Reservoir. Like and in, in Daika also, they have considered a pumping station at Min area. Uh, likewise, all these master plans, they have considered this pumping and I, I want to tell, I want to emphasize that this, this is this is the um, uh, uh, least uh, least lift and the quantity of water being pumped uh, for the NCP development. Yes. This location for At this location, about uh, four thousand to five hundred. 5,000 MCM of water is being uh, is be, is being uh, flow to sea. From that, about uh, 2,270 MCM of water could be pumped. Uh, uh, 154, 124 sugarcane and about 154 uh, these two tanks, Howdul and Kantale, to get for NCP target area. Then uh, about the uh, to explain about the uh, economic condition and economic viability of this project, I, I will invite uh, Dr. Priyanka Dumsing, who is our economist, to explain about the economic condition of this. Uh, good evening. Uh, so I will uh, be very brief about. Uh, the economic impact or the economic viability of the project after listening maybe around one hour. Uh, so uh, I guess that readers are quite uh, uh, maybe tired. Uh, if I uh, very briefly mention, uh, we look at the, uh, we conducted the economic analysis. Uh, mainly uh, by taking into account the benefit uh, from the agricultural crops and uh, drinking water. So when we uh, when we look at the when we look at benefits uh, coming from these two areas against the cost of products or cost uh, related to the project, uh, we found uh, we have a positive NPV. Uh, economic uh, net present value and the returns uh, to the benefit come at a rate of 9.8% uh, which is above the uh, the threshold level of adb threshold level of 9 9% uh, which means that uh, the program is economically viable Actually, in this context, it is important to mention that we have considered only the uh, direct benefit, uh, which is relatively easy for us to uh, estimate. Uh, that is uh, the agriculture crops and uh, the drinking water uh, 
the benefit related to those two areas. However, as we know, uh, in addition to uh, those two areas, uh, the irrigation uh, system will have benefits in the area of home gardening, inland fisheries, uh, livestock, tourism, industry, as well as transportation, because uh, related to the, the irrigation system, there is a road network also developed in order to uh, uh, in order for the purpose of uh, maintenance related activities. And as we know, with respect to our other irrigation systems, around the irrigation system, the tourism sector is developed. And in particular, uh, the uh, inland fishery sector is one of the uh, key sector, I mean, one of the important for livelihood in the uh, north central province. Uh, and uh, with, uh, in some uh, irrigation tanks, you have uh, fishing year round, but in other case, uh, uh, if the water is limited, you have seasonal fishing, but with the water, the possibility is high that the farmers can have, I mean, fishermen can engage in year round uh, fishing. So those are some of the benefits uh, that we uh, actually, uh, we half the way we uh, started uh, uh, estimating or uh, uh, basically uh, capturing them, but we have not included them into the uh, existing uh, uh, economic uh, evaluation. So uh, it is very important to mention that agricultural crop benefit account for 89% of the total benefit. That is, that implies that the poor are benefited from poor people are benefited out of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, development project. So uh, I think uh, the next, uh, yeah, Mr. Dayaratna will continue. I think this is the benefited area in the north central province. Actually, it includes thirteen divisional secretary areas, starting from. Uh, and uh, These are very rural uh, divisional secretary areas and provision of water. Without water, I think there will not be any economic development in this area. Further development is only possible with the transfer of water. So I think this is uh, shown in the overall picture of the NCP canal with the uh, develop, uh, develop of 100,000 hectares in, uh, in, in, the, in North Central province and the Northwestern province and the Minipe Canal. Total will be about 100,000 hectares. And drinking water will be provided about 260 MCM, both in phase one and phase two. Although there are 1,500 minor tanks in this area, I think we have considered provision of water to about 1,200 minor tanks in CPM, 350 in Northwestern Province Canal project. And also it will feed uh, five major tanks in North Central Province, seven in Northwestern Province. And it will help to control the CKD problem and increasing cropping in Mahayan Nala, develop infrastructure, create employment opportunities, industries like inland fisheries, cottage industries, tourism. I think at this stage, I should say that even this uh, Habarana area, the tourism was developed because of transfer of water from the Hurluya Feeder Canal. And that turns about now 1.75 billion per annum. Actually. Now, with the transfer of this water to this minor cascade system, tourism could be improved greatly in this area. It also, I think, this, the Incipit Canal target area is uh, about 400,000 hectares of land. So this area, the groundwater will be improved and people will be able to do a lot of uh, other crops in the highlands actually. So there will be a lot of indirect benefit as Dr. Dunsinga mentioned, uh, the, which has not been taken into account. So with this uh, benefit sector, we will be able to capture uh, the EIR will be around the 9% of limit.
So these are the some of the figures uh, of the why NCP canal is uh, required actually. If you take this area, the the soil is more favorable for cropping, actually agriculture cropping, and uh, with water, without water, no potential for any further development. Original mandate of MDG, and actually in the original Mahali master plan, NCP canal was given the priority. Now all the other uh, systems has been developed, but NCP canal area has been left out. And most fertile lands are available in the North Central Points Canal, this area. And therefore, if you provide water, I think there will be much benefits. Indirect benefits will be there. And the, certainly there will be economic viability will be, can be improved, actually. This is also a case, uh, I think, in another irrigation project, Kinjoe Basin. When we provide water, I think there will be some groundwater improvements in and the greenery will be increased. I think if you say the uh, right side of the canal, you can see brown color, but after provision of water, you can see it has been changed to greenery. I was a young engineer in the irrigation department prior to diversion of water to the Anuradhapura city. Actually at that time, the Anuradhapura city was a very dry city actually. But if you go to Andhra city today, you can see a lot of greenery. This is because I think the diversion of Mahavali water to the Andhra city tanks, only 50 mcm has been diverted at present to the Andhra city tanks. With diversion, there will be a lot of change has occurred in the environment. I think this similar environmental change will occur in the north central points, northwestern points, and uh, this uh, cannot be estimated as a benefit at the quantifiable benefit at the moment. So these are the changes. Even, even if you take consider the uh, Rajangani scheme, Rajangani scheme was a water short scheme in the prior to diversion of uh, Mahali water to Kalavala. And the irrigation department started the water management practices in Rajangani scheme. That because it was a water short system. But today, if you go to Rajangan, it's a water excess system, actually. Always you can see during the mass season, Rajangan is still sent a uh, lot of water to the sea, actually. So, and the Kalawaya has become a perennial river today. At that time, before diversion, it was a Kalawaya, and there was hardly any water in the stream after the mass season. So, all these changes will take place when you divert water from a one basin to another basin. So the, the basin which is receiving water will improve the, its environment tremendously and the greenery will be increased. So I think we should uh, all uh, develop this NCP canal. Otherwise, uh, we will be left out about very large area of land without any economic development. So therefore, even at high cost, I think we should, be, we should develop this NCP canal project and uh, complete the final phase of Mahavali development project. Even after completion and diversion of NCP canal, we will not be able to reach the full target of the Mahavali development project because most of the areas have been covered under the declared as forest reserves. And also the water is not available to develop the full 365,000 hectares. Today it is not possible to develop any new lands because, uh, because uh, even in all major schemes here, we have considered providing water to the existing uh, irrigation uh, lands only. We are not developing any new lands under even in phase one or phase two. Therefore, this is a, a project I think we should be taken. We should uh, start as early as possible, provided this, uh, the cost will be around uh, 1.3 billion US dollars for the construction of RKTC and uh, NCP canal and its branch channels and the pumping house around 250 MCM. But uh, economic viability shows that it is uh, economically viable. Like then before ending up this uh, long presentation, I, will, I, I would like to address several technical, main technical issues. Based and during recent past. 
uh, first one is uh, you all may know that there are 28 kilometer long canal is going uh, long tunnel is going to construct under this program uh, the excavated diameter of this tunnel is about eight meter and the finished size of the tunnel is about 6.8 to 7.6 uh, meter diameter. So I will explain about how this uh, diameter was derived. So when we derive a size of a tunnel, uh, tunnel or in canal, first we need to send some quantity of water to meet the irrigation and drinking water requirement in our target area. So as per the water balance assessment, it was uh, uh, this, uh, it designed that uh, 40 cubic meters per second uh, canal capacity is required to meet the water requirements at phase one and phase two of this NCP canal project. Uh, then when we have uh, fixed the uh, discharge capacity, uh, next item is uh, longitudinal slope we, we, we could achieve. When we consider uh, the length of the upper air canal, no, upper air air canal or uh, phase, uh, stage one of uh, NCP canal from Moragaganda to Yakala, the total length is about 65.5 kilometers. Uh, but when we consider the starting level of Moragaganda reservoir, it's 143, and our First, was water user is Furulwewa, and the full supply elevation of Furulwewa is about 133 uh, BC level. So we only have about 10 meter level difference. Uh, within that 10 meter level difference, we have to um, manage. So therefore, a mild slope has to be adopted. Um, when we are designing this channel. Uh, but uh, the factors such as uh, critical velocity ratios um, and the other um, self cleansing velocity, I mean, non tilting velocity, those criteria, all these criteria were uh, considered and confirmed that uh, this, this is a viable option. So then uh, I will do some comparison about the uh, capacity of some of the canals and tunnels uh, in compared with the canals and tunnels going to construct under Mahavali Water Security Industrial Program. Uh, this first column shows the capacity in cubic meters per second. Then the second column shows the capacity if this, uh, if this tunnel or canal is operated in full capacity in entire year, this is the um, maximum possible diversion could be achieved. Uh, in, in third one, this is the annual average diversion carried out in last well, uh, about last 30 years. And uh, by dividing this average annual diversion from uh, maximum possible uh, diversion amount, we can get the percentage of utilization. These are some of the percentage of utilization of the some of the canals. Uh, all these data were, were obtained from the existing databases of uh, maintained by the, uh, Water Management Secretariat. Uh, but uh, when we consider the uh, expected uh, percentage of utilizations of this NCP canal, KMTC and NWP, uh, you can see they are comparatively higher than most of the uh, canals operating at present. <coughs> uh, then this is another small uh, detail. Uh, when we are operating the uh, NCP canal, uh, it's uh, 42, it, it's uh, overload capacity, 40 is the design capacity, and uh, 20 is the half, half of the capacity, and 10 is the quarter of one quarter of the capacity. So 
when we consider an annual annual year this uh, ncp canal is operated in full about 188 days of the year and uh, in cumulatively um, more than uh, 229 ab about 229 days the canal is operated at more than half of the capacity and uh, 79 days less than one part of the capacity these are the percentages if we, if we calculate the, with this data uh, then you can see the, this canal is operating in, in most of the days of the year uh, uh, after completion of phase two and it is not over designed or then the next problem next issue uh, we have seen somewhere uh, is the alignment of this tunnel actually here i have taken two routes one is the this tunnel route which is going to construct at present and the initial canal route uh, considered under the uh, mcb pre feasibility study uh, actually in pre feasibility study uh, this route was considered as a open canal route with uh, four uh, short tunnels even with this option some tunnels tunnels are required uh, 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 total length of these four tunnels is about 12 km uh, but the problem was this route is going through four strict forest reserves of sri lanka if we consider this area, this area is called <coughs> Giritale Minaria Nature Reserve, one of the strict forest reserves of Sri Lanka. Then Minaria National Park, then Kaudula National Park, and in this area, uh, Kurulu Forest Reserve, it is called Man and Biosphere Kurulu Forest Reserve. So, uh, when we go to an EIA study, uh, the forest department and department of wildlife conservation is strongly objected for this proposal uh, due to several reasons uh, they are um, by constructing a canal through these forest reserves uh, these forest uh, reserves will permanently divide which will severely affect the uh, severely curtail the movement of wildlife especially uh, most of you know that uh, large herds of elephants are roaming around this area in min area and caudula reservoirs uh, i mean the reservoirs and these areas and uh, uh, due to this uh, elephant herd uh, this polonnaruwa area has become a tourist destination is one of the main reasons for that so if we construct this canal all these things will get changed then another reason is um, if we need to construct a canal through these forest reserves, we need about 50 meter wide uh, corridor for the construction. So if we uh, construct canals along this route, about 154 hectare of uh, forest lands has to be cleared. Then uh, uh, about uh, 100,000 plus trees uh, about uh, over 30, 30 centimeter DBA has to be removed um, if this construction is going on. Therefore, uh, uh, Forest Department and the uh, Wildlife Department strongly objected this, uh, this uh, canal option. And um, there was a condition that uh, if this canal is to uh, constructed, um, through these uh, forest reserves, it has to be go as an underground tunnel. Otherwise, uh, one reason is uh, it is uh, illegal as per the uh, Wildlife Act of Sri Lanka. And uh, another one is many damages is uh, occurring to these forest reserves. Therefore, uh, during the EIA study, that this EIA study was also conducted by uh, national consultant engineers and many other experts. Uh, uh, during the EIA study only, this, uh, this route 
take to a tunnel route. Uh, this, this, uh, although this uh, tunnel route going through this forest area, only three only three hectares of uh, lands are cleared uh, at the tunnel portal. Only that, uh, and it is an environmental friendly option. No harm to wildlife. No social impact. Can ensure safe construction. And uh, and the, uh, and another advantage is. Uh, by constructing this straight uh, tunnel, the length of the upper and higher canal will be reduced by 12 kilometers. If this open canal is constructed, the total length will become 77 kilometers. By uh, due to the construction of this tunnel, it has been reduced by 12 kilometers, and the total length is 65 kilometers. Uh, Uh, and this canal will function as an express canal, and the slope of the uh, canal also could include, increase due to this uh, uh, reduction of length. These are some of the options considered under, uh, during this EIA studies for the comparative study. And this is the uh, forest area map uh, showing under uh, going in this area. And the more details about uh, North Central Province Canal Project uh, in our uh, Mahavali Water Security Investment Program YouTube channel, you can uh, you can see these these videos. Then you, then you can get a, a total uh, understanding about the phase one and phase two of entire project. So uh, now I'm going to conclude our presentation and. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Daya Ratna to uh, uh, conclude the presentation. Yeah, I think we are with this. I think we have taken a very long time actually for the presentation of the our presentation. Actually, now it is open for any discussion, and also any queries could be raised by members of the ISL and other members. So it is over to you actually, Mr. Lalit. Uh, Engineer Lalit, we have an yeah, opportunity. Yeah, can you see that the chat box? You can, there are several. Uh, can you see those? Yes, we can see it now actually. Shall I read the question? Yes. yes. If you can. Shall I read? Yes, yes, it's better actually. All right. Okay. First one is uh, uh, from Engineer Nishan Galagi, maybe. Uh, I don't know. There's a, some more from. Shall I go first? Uh, does the irrigation department has comprehensive rainfall details? If yes, what are the locations? What is the time period? monthly, weekly, daily, or even higher rainfall within a short period to develop models and to and to do the analysis and to get the results to the predictions. That was uh, 
from engineer nishan galage uh for this question um uh, the irrigation so irrigation department and uh, department of mythology and uh, and many other organization are currently maintaining rainfall data networks and for this study we have obtained data from uh, mythological department irrigation department and some data from mahavali some some uh, mahavali officers mahavali dams and other places also and uh, we have taken about 160 rainfall station within the mahavali systems and this study was conducted on daily basis using daily rainfall data and uh, time period was from 1976 to uh, 2015 a four year period uh, i think uh, the you have get the answer for this Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one is yes. Pumping can be done, but with the current uh, power energy crisis we are facing, do you think water pumping is an economically viable option? What will be the cost of water after pumping using expensive energy? I think here. I think. Uh, I think pumping is. Uh, It's a requirement. I think if you don't pump, actually, we will be curtailing the about 30 percent area in the SCP canal. But this will be a, a not initially. A, it will be the last stage development of the SCP canal. In the design of the pump house, we has we have considered a floating solar system also integrated into the system. So this uh, floating system. Uh, will be about 25 hectares of uh, 25 hectares of uh, solar panels, and it can generate about 25 megawatts of power. So with this power, I think we will be able to manage the manage the manage the system, and uh, capital cost of this has to be included in the in the pump house. That is one way we can uh, avoid this uh, high cost. and also we have estimated the cost of pumping actually when we calculated about 300 mcm of if we are pumping lifting from uh, mahavali river it is uh, costing about uh, 600 million rupees per annum actually it accounts to about 2 million rupees per a uh, 1 million cubic meter that will be about 2 rupees per cubic meter of water actually so but it is actually we will be use this water effectively in the north central points canal in a very and the, we will be able to get much more benefit from this uh, water actually so that is how we have considered the, in uh, in the economic analysis and also actually even in the mahavali master plan actually 800 mcm of water is used as pumping actually at that time they were con- they, they considered uh, to use part of the power generated from victoria randenegara cascade for pumping water actually so like that i think the, we have to go for a compromise in uh, if you are going for pumping but pumping is not required initially actually pumping will be required for the uh, cultivation of the sugarcane area so that is not that can be economically justifiable uh, okay. uh, what is the expected pumping head in this pumping case and what is the pumping capacity total uh, it's about uh, 30 meter to the sugar cane area and another 20 meters to the kantade uh, tank so total head will be about 50 meters but the initially we require lifting of about uh, 30 meters of water to the kantade sugar area as well as to the kantade paddy area so if you are going to lift it into the kantade tank only we require another 20 meter lift actually the capacity of the pump is uh, is about 15 cubic meters per second It will be about three pumps of five cubic meters 
need to be installed actually. We need large uh, power from the national grid to start these pumps actually. And uh, after that, it could be used by setting the solar solar power into the CEB actually, we can get that water. Uh, what are the tourism sector projects with regard in this music? Tourism sector projects with regard in this music. I think uh, with the development of NCP canal, there will be a lot of tourism potential. Yeah, I think uh, what uh, at the time that we discussed about the benefit areas, we mentioned about the, the potential uh, of uh, promoting tourism around the canal system. Uh, though we do not have specifically include the particular tourism related intervention into the project, uh, what was highlighted is uh, what must be highlighted uh, was the, uh, the basically the potential of promoting uh, rather than having uh, a particular project integrated into the, uh, the current uh, project. The kind of investment should be generated at the farm gate. For the for that there is a need to guarantee water availability at the farm gate. For the farmers at the right time to write. There was, uh, therefore, water management at system level with farmer uh, participation plays an important role. It's true, actually, it is, I think we, I agree with you, and then uh, I give you this uh, requirement. But actually, the NCP canal will, will function as an online, on, on demand canal, actually. So, with the expressway canal system, the NCP canal will be able to provide water at, on the on the on, de, on, on demand on demand water, and then that can be achieved actually. Your proposal is taken into account actually, and also we are going to do cascade development in the NCP canal area, and as such, there won't be a problem in uh, giving water to the farmers in that area. What are the action state guarantees that meet under this project? What are the action taken to guarantee that meet under the? You have to explain what is it? Yeah, yeah. Can you explain, Mr. Panapitiya, Engineer Panapitiya? What is it? Uh, actually, they cannot speak because uh, okay. uh, uh, there's no, no such facility granted. So that means guarantee for the participation of farmers because we are granting another facility. Yeah, there is another another project under the Mahavadi Water Security Investment Program called ISCWB Irrigation System Improvements Project and another project for system water integration project as a system improvement project and all this uh, could provide some uh, some solutions to these problems actually yeah actually we have not looked I mean, in, in economic analysis, we don't look at the possible recovery period as such compared to the financial analysis. I mean, uh, when we do the financial analysis, generally we look at uh, uh, the 
recovery of uh, costs uh, with respect to uh, financial analysis in order to understand the cash flow. Uh, but when it comes to economic analysis, we uh, basically look at whether the uh, economic percent value is positive and uh, uh, whether the uh, internal rate of return is higher than the cost of capital. So as long as it is higher, uh, it means that uh, it is benefit economically beneficial for the country. I don't think I think that is without transfers in diversion, it is not possible actually to uh, because I think, yeah, actually, uh, doing uh, doing some uh, system improvements programs. Uh, in some areas, the, the irrigation department and Mahali authority has achieved some uh, increase in cropping intensity, for example, uh, MRRP project. So, but uh, through the water savings and system developments, uh, the cropping intensity ca cannot be increased by a larger amount. So, the uh, one of the main solution for this is to provide some diversion from um, uh, water surplus area. And I want to add something that to go because the question is to upgrade the available reservoirs. Actually, the, the, the trans, what we do is transfacing diversion means we divert water from one place to another place. But the existing reservoirs are we can't improve the capacity of that. And there should be a storage in with the um, future climate change and uh, more uh, water deficit areas show. So uh, the, uh, the solution is only the diversion from one place to another because we have a storage reservoir at, at Moragahakanda. From Moragahakanda, without diverting Moragahakanda or without having Moragahakanda, we can't improve that uh, dry zone area. Yes, yes. I think you have got the answer for that question. Can you add something more to tell you? During. Next question is during the heavy yeah. rain within a short period, what are the options to overcome the problem using these canals? Uh, actually, at present, uh, the entire world is experiencing climate change impacts. Uh, as per the uh, Global Climate Risk Index developed by the German Watch Organization, uh, Sri Lanka is uh, at a place below 10, uh, 10 uh, vulnerable countries in the world. So with this climate change effects, always uh, 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 high intensity rainfall with a short period of time uh, could be experienced. And uh, the, the most promising uh, option to face this climate change effects is to is to uh, provide more and more storages and links the existing storages by uh, transfacing canals or link canals uh, to divert water from surface area, surplus area to other area. Actually, this is to, this is what this project is currently doing. I think that tunnel will be full actually, almost full of water will be retained in the yeah. tunnel actually. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, question from uh, Mr. Vasantalal. Uh, 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 actually, for this simulation study, was conducted for 40 year simulation period. and. Uh, uh, of course, this uh, long tunnel is especially a critical factor, and uh, uh, but uh, but this canal, uh, the operation of this canal was kept using uh, uh, several hydraulic models and 
uh, all the hyperbolic principles were considered, and uh, uh, it was proven that this canal, this this canal and tunnel could be operated without operational problem. And if we consider some uh, uh, some uh, canals and tunnels in India, especially in Narmada Canal, uh, it has a very mild slope compared to this uh, this uh, canals in uh, this Apalhara Canal project. Uh, for example, in Narmada Main Canal, the uh, longitudinal slope of this uh, canal is about uh, one meter uh, for 15,000 meters. But in our case, it is about uh, in, in open canal, one meter to 10,000 meters. So uh, the canals with minor slopes can be operated by, 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 by conducting a proper construction. Yes, you can make a time cons time taken for actually uh, shall I read the question? Yes. yes. Uh, I think uh, the next one is what will be the expected implementation implementation? I mean to start the project. The question from Jinan Nimal Tilakaratna. Already the phase two, the phase one already started and about 30% of the work has now been completed. And uh, document for the next uh, balance area is also now underway. And it is expected to complete all the works by 2024. That is the phase one. The phase two, still the feasibility studies are ongoing. And uh, phase two is still the funding has not been secured. So phase two, as a result, I think that uh, we need to consider in a later stage, I think it will take about uh, 2030 to complete the entire project actually. <laughs> okay. Next question again from engineer Vasantalal. Instead of saying so much MCM is delivered, you must say how much water reliability is there for a farmer who has a certain water demand. Instead of saying how much MCM is delivered, how much Actually, under this project, we are going to increase the, the question by the Mr. Vasantalal. Instead of saying so much MCM is delivered, you must say how much water reliability is there for a farmer who has a certain water okay. demand. Actually, by diverting this water, we are planning to increase the cropping intensity of the uh, minus scales to about 1.7 to 1.8. Thereby, the farmers is having some reliability in getting water, water, assured. water assured for the second cultivation. Actually. In the Maha season, there will not be a problem because almost all the minor tanks in this area could do a one season cropping. But diverting water will enable the farmer to get a second crop actually. That is the most important thing in this area. Okay, next question. Instead of lifting of water to inter-trans basin, do you have considered any other option? Actually, the lifting of water is considered as the final option um, to supply water. So, so in this um, uh, in implementation program also, we have considered this pumping option as the final one. And because uh, without lift, uh, without pumping or, or lifting water, this entire uh, cultivated area under NCT canal cannot be completed. We have to contain about thirty percent of the yeah. area. If, if we are not going to do pumping, about 30% of the irrigable area uh, will be cut in. Okay, next section, just a comment 
foreign consultants always propose pumping water in this type of water projects and also in flood control water projects. But I have serious doubts in such proposals. Good example is Nilwala flood water pumping. This uh, from uh, Dr. Kamal Laksit. Any comments? Now, this is actually not proposed by the foreign consultant. This is uh, it's, uh, coming from the origin from the MCB actually. MCB prepared this uh, feasibility studies and at that time also pumping was proposed actually. Uh, all previous proposals pumping has been included actually. Integral part of the pumping Next. Okay. Uh, uh, next from Garlage. If you can supply water for irrigation using irrigation wells and lift irrigation uh, system as a temporary solution until complete the major projects, will it be worth? Uh, actually, actually for. Uh, lift irrigation from irrigation wells, the groundwater should be there. Uh, if we consider this NCP areas, uh, just downstream of uh, minor tanks, the groundwater condition is good, especially in mass season. But during the other season also, this uh, uh, water availability in this groundwater wells uh, is not there. So um, by constructing this uh, uh, irrigation wells, Yes, we can have some advantage, but it is not a, a permanent solution. Okay, next one from engineer Sanjeev Vijay Singh. Uh, Minipe Yoda Ella was constructed as single bank canal which could capture local inflow inflows by our ancestral engineers. But under your program, you have converted it to two bank canal system. Now we no. cannot no. capture local inflows. What is the no, point for this change? It is not correct only in certain sections. I think we have uh, demarcated the canal actually. By actually, uh, correct. Minipay Yodal was a single bank canal constructed by our ancestors. But uh, under this project, uh, to avoid some um, water weeds coming into the canal, some um, um, uh, Gabian walls has been constructed uh, in some of the area, selected sections, but also in addition to some of the uh, sections in the canal, uh, before, before this rehabilitation, uh, um, water transfer was not done properly. So a lot of water we sent, there were rocks and many things. To overcome these issues and to avoid some uh, Falling of these uh, bands, some uh, some lining of sections were introduced. It's only a very limited yeah, section. Yeah, under seventy-four kilometers. Yeah, only for yeah. limited sections. This. Okay. Next one from Engineer Seniviratna. When calculating cost-benefit analysis on drinking water supply for beneficiaries to avoid CKD issues. It might require more investment for water supply. Do you have calculated when calculating IRR? Uh, in fact, that we have considered the supply of water to the national uh, water supply group rather than to the beneficiary directly. So in that sense, uh, we do not need to uh, consider the additional investment associated with supply mm -hmm. water to the beneficiary. Okay. Uh, from engineer Tevan Hiram Rajan Tiran, do you have any suggestions alternative material for concrete to construct the canal? Because nowadays demand demands of metal was increased, so mountains are heavily crushed. In future, it will be definitely affect the landscape of Sri Lanka. He asked, he's asking about any alternative material that can be used for construction. We cannot hear you well, actually. I 
think you cannot hear you well. So the materials we are reusing from the, uh, the tunnel, tunnel, tunnel excavated material. So canal excavation. And canal excavation, the rocky area. And also the open canals, the rapisoidals are not for the reinforcement, the mass boundary. So 100 mm thickness. They are asking about their quarries. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. This is again from Engineer Mind the Panapit here. Uh, there was 30% increase in the water productivity and 36% increase in farm income under MRRP implemented in system H in 2000 after improving system level water management program. Have you done that type of intervention under this project? No, under this project, I think the one is actually the construction of the infrastructure. And there is another consultancy component called irrigation system improvement project. I think that project is looking after this uh, uh, introduction of bulk water issue concept, etc. This one from engineer Milanka Damit. How do you minimize this village at Rantam Bay, which was given as 9, 900 MCM? And how can this amount be managed during two seasons, Yala and Maha? Actually, this um, uh, 900 plus spillage is not from Rantan Bay, it's from Mini Bay, as I explained. Uh, by constructing this uh, lower Umawi reservoir and constructing Randinikal Kalwanga Transa Canal, we can divert more water to uh, storage as constructed. Actually, in Kalwanga Reservoir, there are spare capacities always available. And in NCP area also, there are some reservoirs, spare capacity available even during mass season, because most of the reservoirs are spilling during mass season, but in Hurulu ever, some, uh, always, sometimes Nuer ever, and Mahakanadara, those, and Pavad Kulam, those tanks are having spare capacity even during mass season. So the surplus, wa surplus water in mass season could be diverted uh, to these tanks. Discussion from engineer Kapila Piris. What can you say now about the validity of water related predictions made at the beginning of the project about 50 years ago? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, if, if we consider the predictions made that initial Mahavali master plan, there are some there are some differences in some of the areas. If we consider the water availability at Polgol, is about uh, uh, is about less by about 400 mcm per annum, as per the um, uh, prediction made that Mahavali master plan. But we consider the Victoria and Randinigal, the water availability is high compared to the master plan. So, uh, and the. Uh, at the when we consider the water availability at Moragahakanda, uh, now we have about three to four years data uh, about the catchment inflows and uh, um, a prediction of uh, Moragahakanda net catchment inflow was about 300 MCN. As per the data, it is a little bit more than that. So, uh, in most of the places, the uh, predictions are going closely with the actual data, but, but, but not at every place. Reduction is mainly on the Polgol. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, on, that's the last question we received. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we are not allow, allowing others one another to supply of drinking water for, yeah, no, excuse me. To supply of drinking water for Japan from Iranamadu tank was not considered due to water storage now. Uh, water storage. Now it is being implemented to uh, desalinization diesel, plant with a very high QNM cost. If Iranamadu is getting water from new this new this system, can we consider that option? Now we are we are proposing to provide some water 
at the last stage of NCP canal, because NCP canal will be developed in stages actually. In the last stage only, the water will be diverted to any excess water will be diverted to Irinamad. So that may take another 10 years. So I think it is uh, not possible to provide water to Japna at this stage from the Irinamadu tank. So the only alternative will be to go for a desalinization as uh, as as planned by the water supply board. But in, there are other options also, I think, if you construct uh, fresh water lagoons, actually, then it is possible to get water from the uh, fresh water lagoons rather than taking water from the Irnamadu tank. And Appa Kanakarayan Nadu also proposed as a in-basin reservoir. This reservoir could be constructed lower Palia. Lower Palia. And if these uh, reservoirs can be constructed as in-basin reservoirs, water for Japna could be obtained from these reservoirs. Okay, this may be last two questions. Uh, yeah, we have to finish it. Uh, it seems you are managing with very critical slopes to maintain discharge and surface roughness of canal lining is very important. How long this canal will function in full capacity considering surface wearing with time? Reactivation methods after design period. Yes, well, uh, now we have yes, for this uh, concrete panels for the smoothness we have designed for this manning 015. This is uh, uh, for the durable time more than 20 years for our past experience in the mini PRB uh, transmission panels, still working the same 016 the smoothness. Here we reduced the 015, the more smoothness than that. So uh, after 20, 25 years, there should be the maintenance to be done. Okay, this is last question. This, uh, as I feel, is very important. Uh, this is from Engineer Sanjeev Vijayasinghe again. Uh, why did you not consider or study our ancient systems such as Yoda Ala system in conveying water from one basin to another rather than just following foreigners' design concepts and adopt them in present context? This is not feasible, I think. This is because of the elevation differences uh, we have actually. That is not possible actually. Actually, as per the uh, issues in terrain and the length of the canal and the required quantity of water should be diverted, uh, it is good actually. These ancient systems are blended with the existing environment and uh, they are providing a tremendous support to uh, improve the ground door tables and environment so actually it is good but uh, as per the existing constraint uh, we, we can't go for that kind of development but but, but anyhow we, we are going to um, uh, accept that uh, these ancient development systems are providing much sustainable benefits to, to, to the sri lanka uh, even now uh, I think that's a good point to start for our next uh, uh, one, maybe after two weeks' uh, time, we are planning to organize uh, some with some experts. I think you also can uh, join. Engineer Zaran, do you need to tell uh, something as final? Then after Engineer Chaminda, which is a deputy chairman, will be to the vote of thanks. I mean, that, that, do, you, do you need to tell something from your side to as a final? No, we are thanking for all IESL. IESL for giving this opportunity to present our Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. I think we look forward to get cooperation from you, I think, even in the future. We would like to get involved in the engineering IESL presentation even in the future. And also we will... Uh, Give some answers. Answers. Yes, we have prepared the. We, we have prepared the booklet. Uh, 
providing providing most of the information about the project and uh, some of the critical details technical so details. Uh, uh, in very soon we will share this booklet with all of the engineers and uh, by uh, by looking at the uh, uh, videos in our nwsip youtube channel you, you can get more information also and thank you very much for uh, civil engineering the committee of iesl to to provide us this uh, valuable opportunity thank you very much ये चामिंदर जैसी ना नाउ गाइस आस्क तू या दिस इस अनदर वेरी सक्सेसफुल सेशन कंडक्टेड बाय सिविल इंजीनियरिंग सेक्शन कमिटी फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक अवर इनवाइटेड पैनल मेंबर्स हु डी डी एक्सेलेंट इनफॉरमेटिव डिटेल टेक्निकल सेशन इंक्लूडिंग वेरी कंप्रेंसिव प्रेजेंटेशन इट्स कवरिंग प्रोजेक्ट Uh, development areas under uh, proposed project as well as the economic impact and viability under this project for benefit of the who are in a dry especially in a dry dry zone as a water supply engineer i know how difficult uh, supplying uh, drink, drinking water as well as the irrigation uh, water in the such a, uh, especially in the dry zone of the country uh, first of all i will Uh, uh, I will uh, thank uh, our panel members, Engineer Mrs. P A A uh, P K uh, Panala, Additional Secretary, Water Resources Management, Ministry of Irrigation. Madam, thank you very much for a valuable contribution uh, to success this uh, event. Also, uh, Engineer Mrs. K R S Pereira, Project Consultant, uh, Technical, Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. Uh, then another uh, uh, invited uh, engineer, engineer K O U Karuna Naik, senior engineer, also the uh, consultant engineer, N C P C P program, project management unit, uh, Ministry uh, Mahavali Water Security Investment Program. Uh, also, thank you very much for a valuable contribution. Then engineer P W C Daya Ratna, deputy team leader. Uh, Program manage program management unit, design and supervision consultant of uh, Mahavali Water Supply and uh, Investment Program. Also, he is our uh, moderator of the today uh, today uh, program. Thank you very much, sir. Your valuable uh, contribution and uh, handling the our session. Uh, after uh, Dr. D D P M uh, Dunu Singh, ha. Huh? Uh, thank you very much sir your uh, explanation about economic uh, uh, economical impact and viability mentioning as a economics uh, uh, then uh, engineer tilina guru singha uh, water resource engineer program management unit design and supervision consultant of mahavali water supervision uh, mahavali water uh, and uh, improvement program Uh, thank you, Engineer Tirina. You have a very uh, detailed uh, presentation, uh, uh, in, uh, including the graphical uh, lot of that graphical um, slide. Not only that, uh, in addition to that, behind the screen there was um, another uh, group uh, success this event, especially our Chairman Civil Engineering Section Committee, uh, Lalit Palagama. Thank you very much, Engineer Lalit. Then uh, uh, engineer Ranjit Bisilva, uh, he is also our council member as well as he is working under this project and can uh, uh, and can uh, he uh, give very valuable support to coordinate and success this event. Uh, also, uh, engineer Harsha Bulak Singh, hello, he is also our council member. He he coordinate and uh, also involving success this this event. Uh, in in addition to uh, coordination the project and ISL. Uh, engineer Mrs. S. P. Bandara, she is also project manager under project management unit uh, under Mahavali Water Security and Investment Program. So thank you very much for all contribution and uh, support giving for success this event. In addition to that, especially I want to thank uh, uh, joining who is uh, joining today session uh, about 125 members actively participated and. Uh, asking a lot of uh, uh, questions uh, and clarify their uh, questions. So 
finally i thank to uh, who involved uh, in uh, who joining with today session and get knowledge about our program finally i would thank all of you to join with us uh, stay safe thank you very much and good night thank you thank you, thank you. Good night.